Well, hello, it's Still Sober with John Rabin. I'm John Rabin, and I'm still sober. That, um, oh, I'm going to try not, I probably won't do that again. I know that that is the best wordplay for the title of this quote-unquote podcast, but I, uh, like, I, I don't mind saying the catchphrase that I say every week, which is uh, if you're a sober person, hope you're, hope you're staying sober. If you're not a sober person, hope you're staying sane. And I like saying that because I mean it. I, I mean both of those things, but to be, you know, I, I don't know as to go so far as, as if I could just be sitting there going, Hey, it's still sober and I'm still sober. And I'm also John (laughs) Rabin. That's the name of this podcast. And, uh, and I'm both of those things. Um, however, it's there. It's been, I've been recording for a minute. So seems like, uh, that's staying for this episode, at least. Hope you're all right. Here in Austin, Texas, we're having odd weather. Meaning that it was. Uh, fucking cold on Saturday, and uh, today it was a high of uh, in the 70s. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that we're actually going to be experiencing closer to Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, high of 80 tomorrow, high of 84 on Thursday, but then it dips down back into the 70s for a little bit. Uh, and then uh, I don't, I don't even know. It's, it's weird, but yeah. Finally, I get the reference for the band, My Morning Jacket. I get it now. We actually, it actually is that kind of weather that you only wear a jacket for about two hours. And then, then you're stuck having to deal with it. You know, John, put it in your new car. I do. I did. And we did, by the way, I did get that. Uh, I thought that I might have jinxed getting a getting a, a car last week by talking about it, recording the podcast and talking about it before actually picking up the car. And 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 it seemed like the jinx was on. Because. You know, the car was not ready at the time that they said it was going to be ready, but it turns out it was ready an hour later. So it was ready at 3.30 and not 2.30. So we were still able to get it. Um, And here is, excuse me, big yawn. Here is the different, I am thrilling myself. Here is the thing. I I wouldn't say this is a commercial for Carvana. Uh, Here's the realistic uh, review of Carvana. If you don't have a problem, if you're not going to have any kind of a problem, like um, I don't know if there's going to be a problem getting the uh, license plates and the title and everything mailed to us in a timely manner. Um, If we don't get them in a timely manner and then have to contact them about it, that may be an issue. Because trying to get a hold of somebody competent and talk to them, like talk to a person, is not easy. Um, that is the, that is the downside I could see by dealing with Carvana. Is it's like trying to get something done with T-Mobile or Verizon. It's the same kind of thing. But if you're already used to that headache. And you don't want to sit in a fucking dealership for eight hours for them to process something while they make you wait. You've got the funding all approved. Everything's great. We had to, last time we bought a car in a dealership, it, you know, it took us four hours and we paid for it. We didn't even get financing, which is probably why they made us wait because we were making, they were making no money off the car since we were buying it outright. Um, but, uh, it's, I think without having to pay a dealer fee and not having to sit in a fucking dealership for eight hours, if you're, if you're fine with getting a car without test driving it, that's the other thing. You're like, well, it looks good. Um, 
car is fantastic. Everything so so far. So yeah, if I had to review Carvana on a um, Google reviews or something, yes, five stars. Might recommend. How about that? We uh, at work, we're in a um, not not the best neighborhood. Uh, the location of the warehouse. It's on the side of the frontage road of uh, one of our highways. So it's one of these things where if you pass it, you're like, fuck, and you got to loop back around <laughs> to get, if you pass the entrance. Um, interesting thing. So this car had its hazard lights on and its hood up. Stop right in front on the frontage road, mind you. They didn't pull in anywhere. It's on the frontage road. And there are two guys and a kid. Um, and I'm going to refer to one as pudgy, the pudgy one, and then one as the crackhead. Um, meth head, probably meth. More than likely, it's meth. Um, that seems to be more popular nowadays than crack. Anyway, so the 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 methy one had come into our business, and I had to go talk to him. I didn't have to, but I get I did. So this was the story, and I want you to take note of all the different lines. Okay, the story is. I'm on my way to pick up my check and I've run out of gas. Is there anyone uh, who could possibly give me a ride or a few dollars for some gas? And I think that was, was that and, and, and a few other things, but um, all right. So, I neutrally, I didn't do the, oh, shucks. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't apologize. I, I hate apologizing uh, to panhandlers. Uh, but I have gotten better because I've understood that the way you get rid of them is you speak neutrally to them. You do not, because um, you can set them off if you're hostile, they'll, they'll come back at you. And then it's, you know. Like, oh my God, what are they going to do? Well, they're not going to do shit. Um, but they're going to be, but it's annoying. And then you can't get rid of them because they go on rants. Um, they, and they may even start threatening you. And that's just, mm, it's, it's, you know, some people would be scared. But if you've been around them enough, it's, it's really not. The ones that rant at you don't snap and, and, uh, attack you with a machete. Those are those are their own kind of kind of brand of of crazy. These are these are ones that are just hostile because their grift didn't work. The reason it's a grift, first of all, they had the hood up. Why are you raising a hood if you're out of gas when you know you're out of gas? You raise your hood up because you got your hazard lights on and the hoods up. Because you're wanting somebody to pull over so that you can then solicit funds from them or whatever free shit you can get. That's the first thing. Second thing is, can I get a ride or some money? Or some money? Who's going to give, like, like A, can, can I be an inconvenience or you can pay me some money to not be an inconvenience? Anybody who actually needs, anybody who's broke down, who ran out of gas and they've got things they've got going on, they're like, oh man, shit's going on. You know, could I, could you get me to ride to the bus stop or could you give me a, a, a ride to the gas station? Um, you know, whatever. And then that's all they say. I'll take care of everything else. Uh, I looked at, you know, looking at the guy, he's not picking up a paycheck anywhere. So when you start off with a lie, also nobody tells you where they're going. You know, they don't, they're like, oh, 
I, I'm going to have money. I just don't have money now. Like that doesn't, no, nobody, that doesn't happen to everybody. It doesn't happen to anybody. When people break down and stuff, they don't immediately try to get stuff from somebody else. They figure out what they've got to do. Also, if you broke down on a highway, there's roadside. Well, if you're on the frontage road, there's not roadside assistance. So that doesn't matter. Anyway, do not give people money. Or gas, not help them buy them gas. They are, it's, it's, this is a cliche, like this is a grift that they've been doing. And it's, it, it's, it's almost, it's disappointing because the story hasn't changed. It's the same cliche lines. Um, you know, can I have some money for gas? I'm just, you know, I just need three more dollars to get to my destination. Oh, okay. You're, so you are, 22.5 miles away from your destination and all will be well. Those $3 is what's going to make it make or break you. That's all it's going to take. It's just, it's, it's horse shit. It's don't, it doesn't. And it, especially if they have a kid with them, if they have a kid with them. They really are lying. Nobody breaks down with the, with their kid. Not, nobody l- runs out of gas with a kid. They don't. That's crazy. That's crazy. It is, they have the kid with there to elicit sympathy and get a few more bucks for them. These motherfuckers actually had a happy birthday balloon in the car, kind of sitting there, that I'm sure they would have used if they could give the kid the balloon, which they're probably going to use. They were probably on their way if they ran out of gas at all. If they even ran out of gas. They ran out of gas on the way to go panhandle somewhere else, right? So I thought I got rid of them with that whole thing. No, that, you know, they like I thought that they would move on. No, he hung around and then tried to talk to another employee, uh, a coworker of mine, and she told him she does like operations. She's almost, she's not really my boss, but she's kind of my boss, but not really. Like she directs, you know, she makes things happen, you know, for the owner who's my boss and she's not nice. Not like I'm nice, but like, I'm, like I said, I'm neutral. And especially since I've been, uh, uh, you know, following, um, Asian Jesus that now I'm, I'm doing it. By the way, when I say Asian Jesus, there is no Asian Jesus. It's just Eastern philosophy. It's just funnier to say Asian Jesus. It makes, it confuses Christians. It confuses everybody actually, but uh, which is why I use it. But when I say Asian Jesus, the first thing you think is Confucius. Maybe is he talking, is he talking about Buddha? Is Buddha Asian Jesus? It, no, I'm not. None of them. There is no Asian Jesus. It's just a bla- uh, Eastern philosophy thing. Anyway, my whole Zen thing, Taoism thing that uh, that I've been um, on a kick of right now is, uh, has gotten me kind of relaxed. So, I, I mean, it was very, just the whole flowing with the universe, like it's a river kind of a thing. Just like, all right, let's just, let's not fight this. Let's, let's fight with the current. And um, get things done, you know, quit trying to make things happen and just get things done, you know, go with it, right? So, you know, so I was neutral and nice. Uh, She was not. And she told him to get off the property. and, um, and And it immediately made him snap because she was hostile. And rightfully so. Because fuck that guy, right? So he starts, man, he starts ranting and raving. Um, at one at one point, he spit on a car. I don't know why. And came back in the building and I had to confront him again. And at this point, now he's, now he's uh, indignant that we would, e- that we would not help this poor child that he's got sitting in the backseat of a car 
on the frontage road, not parked anywhere, not out of the car for safety. He's got him in the car, but I'm fucking him over by not giving him $3. And of course, you know, he's like, all right, and I'm trying to, I'm shooing him out and he's, he's calling me a little bitch. And I, and I'm like, yes, yes. I've been told that before. Um, sir, you are not the first person to call me a bitch. Um, and you won't be the last. This does nothing to me. Um, it does not enrage me because that's the thing. That's what he's doing now. Cause he's, Oh, I wish you would, you know, put your hands on me. Cause that's what he wants. He's trying to provoke me because if I can hit him first, he can hit me back. And then, you know, I don't know, maybe he sues the company. Maybe he figures out some way to get a little something for himself, but it's not working. Um, Cause he's not going to hit me first. That's they, they figured out the thing they can, you know, if they can get attacked, then they can defend. And then they, they've got an angle, right? Also, if he did hit me first, I would have clocked him in the head with a wrench that I had in my pocket. So I was fine. I wasn't stupid. I came prepared because you, you can't trust crazy. Um, you know, you can't trust, and, and he's not like a crazy person, but because he's got drug addiction issues, he is in a position where it is kind of, he is in, in an insane thought process. So yeah, crazy. And, uh, and he goes out and he starts taking pictures of, uh, uh, the license plates of the cars. Like he's going to, oh, I got him. And I'm like, what the fuck is that going to, what does that mean? What are you going to do? Are you going to look up our information on the internet? You're going to pay the couple hundred dollars it costs to research and get the information. Fucking enjoy your pictures. Whatever. We call the cops and the cops show up eventually, right? As he leaves and he, he goes and gets gas. So the cops arrive just about the time that he comes back with whoever picked him up which is either somebody he went down to the uh, auto shop that was about half a block away, which is what he should have done in the first place because those people look uh, look too friendly, right? So he either got a ride from somebody over there to go get gas or he's got a uh, an accomplice who was waiting that he called to come pick him up because they probably live around in the area within like within four or five miles. They probably live in some section eight housing with about eight to 10 other people. It's only supposed to be four people there, but there's about 10 people in there. Right. And, um, and then this is one just, and then they go out and grift. So the cops end up talking to him. He shows that he has a tank of gas. He puts gas in the car. Huh? See, it's just cop talks to me. I tell him, yeah, you know, he tried to provoke me into fighting him. Uh, you know, it's spit on that windshield. He's uh, just kind of harassing and, and they, they can't do anything really because they're parked in the road. So they make sure that they're able to leave and they leave and they tell me that, you know, if anything, if they come back or anything, just let, you know, let us know, which in my head, I'm like, okay, great. I'll let you know so that you can do nothing later. He's like, oh, well, we just think, you know, the one guy, the pudgy guy, Cause that was the thing is after they took, after that, after, uh, after, after Methy took a pit, took pictures of the license plate and left. Right. Um, Pudgy stayed with the car and I countered by going out to the parking lot and taking a picture of their license plate while Pudgy tried to talk to me about, Hey, what are you doing? And I'm like, I just ignored him. Um, the cop told me that the uh, pudgy had been arrested for panhandling about a week and a half prior. So it's like, this is just, you know, he said they're, he goes, we think that they're, they're probably homeless. They're probably, you know, they're living, they live out of that car and they just ran out of gas. And I'm like, you think they actually ran out of gas? He's like, no, the car was on E. What the fuck officer? You actually believe something that they said? That's fucking stupid. They didn't run out of gas. You can run. You can drive like twenty miles on E. It. 
that's the whole point. You run, you get it low and then you stop there and then you get gas. And you, anyway, I don't, I was actually more irritated with the cop that the cop would actually believe them, believe something that that guy said. And I'm just like, especially when he just told me, no, the other one was arrested for panhandling. That, uh, so, but I tell this whole story because I needed to kill some time, but also because I needed to point out it doesn't, I'm, I'm telling you, if somebody asks you, tells you that they ran out of gas, it's never true. It's always a panhandler. They're always lying. Nobody runs out of gas and then comes up to you as you're walking to your car or while you're working. Nobody comes up into a business to ask for money. Or if you're walking down the street, oh, we ran out of gas. I'm on my way to Oklahoma. You know, whatever. If if they they say that they're on their way someplace, they start giving you a backstory. Just cut them off. Don't be mean. Just say, no, I, I can't help you. That's, that's enough. I've, you know, I've cut people off. I've cut them off before on the street because I don't want them to put forth the effort. They're wasting their time. I'm like, you're wasting my time. You're wasting your time. There's no reason for you to give the story. And what I forgot to do today, I was very proud of myself. I did not lose my temper at all. I did not get an adrenaline rush like some shit was about to go down or anything like that, which I thought that I might, I was actually just, it just all kind of happened. I was, uh, it was interesting. My, my buddy who's an ex Marine was not there. He showed up later and he said he was glad he was not there. I, I said, I'm glad he wasn't there. You know, it might've ended, uh, entertainingly, but uh, a little bit more complicated. And he admitted. So he said, yeah, yeah. As soon as, if he saw the guy spit on a car, he, he would have gone out there and slapped the shit out of him, which would have been awesome, by the way. It would have been nice to see somebody get the, get the shit slapped out of him, like open hand palm slap. That's just hilarious. And you're like, oh, my God, is he OK? You know, like it's not like it's not like punching somebody. That's just um, kind of uncomfortable, but but entertaining. Um. I keep forgetting to do this thing that I want to do, which is when I get hit up by a panhandler and somebody who's lying, big, big fucking story. I want to roll up my sleeve on my right arm and show them the scar I have and go, you see this I used to be a junkie. I was a really bad drug addict. Because of that, I hung out with other junkies. Then I got into recovery and in sober houses and rehab and hung out with a lot of junkies, a lot of low lifes. Some of them trying to get their life together. Some of them not trying. Some of them trying and failing. And going through all of that, I have been around a lot of panhandlers. And a lot of grifts been around it. I know this. You're wasting your time. Come up with a different story. We've heard these for 20 to 30 years. This has been the story. It's time to change. You're hack. You're a hack pandler. You're an open mic pand handler. Do you understand? You suck at it. Up your game. You got to get better. This is bullshit. I'm un, I'm, I keep forgetting to do it. And later I go, no, oh, I should have shown him my scar. <laughs> oh, Jesus. All right. Stillsoberpod at gmail.com for any questions or comments that are positive to neutral. That's all I had. I just had to tell you the story all to bring up the fact that I keep forgetting 
to stop someone and go, hey, man, listen. I've been there. You can't. You're wasting your time. You need to you need to pick your mark better. I'm not the guy. You're trying to sell insurance to an insurance salesman or someone who used to sell insurance. I, it's, you're, you're wasting your fucking time here. And it's like, what have I told you? I'm like, what have I told you? Like, I got you. You can't. I saw you coming before you even got here. That's that's how I saw your angle before you you arrived. That's how predictable. That's how much I saw in before you got here. So just fucking move along, figure a different grift. Cause this one is bullshit. All right. We'll see you next week. Later.